I am in Chicago and just as I arrived here, got out of the cab, I was overwhelmed by the smell of cannabis and tie-dye t-shirts everywhere. It's the weekend of the Fare Thee Well tour of the Grateful Dead, a series of three shows, uh, a festival, a ball, all kinds of Grateful Dead things. So let's talk a little bit about the Grateful Dead. I'm going to go to someplace a little more quiet and talk about the dead. Here's a quiet place to talk about the dead. The Grateful Dead. You know, the Grateful Dead are in the Bible. Most people will tell you that those who have died without accepting Christ in this lifetime, they have no reason to be grateful. They cannot be grateful because they either know nothing, they are waiting uh, judgment to annihilation, can't be too thankful for that, and possibly they're in conscious eternal torment, and there is no grateful dead in the places where demons are lighting you on fire with tar and puncturing you with pitchforks. But there is a grateful dead in Scripture, and we see it in the writings of both Peter and Paul. In First Peter chapters 3 and 4, it says that the gospel was preached even to the dead. And this gospel wasn't preached as a na 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 look where I am, Jesus coming down and taunting people, but he was loving people. That Jesus, at the crucifixion, as he descended, as he was raised and ascended, something amazing happened. At the cross, Jesus was crucified, he drew all to himself, drew all judgment judgment of the flesh, draw flesh to himself, draw humanity to himself, crucified that old humanity and descended and preached the gospel. This is what it says in 1 Peter chapter 3. It says that for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but being made alive in the spirit, in which he went to proclaim to the spirits in prison because formerly they did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few people that is eight persons were brought through safely through water Jesus descended to the lower regions that's what it says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 to through 10 that he, he descended to the lower regions and then later he ascends. So what is he doing there while he's in the lower regions, while he's in the earth, while he's in the grave, while he's in Hades or Sheol or whatever we want to call it, hell? Jesus is preaching the gospel, and not just to the righteous dead, not just to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to Enoch, well, he's not there anyway, but to, to Noah. No, he's preaching it to Noah's enemies. He's preaching it to the ones who had to be wiped out, because if they weren't wiped out, all flesh would have wiped itself out. So God's not doing this as a genocidal God. He's doing it as a merciful God, because... He's taking away the flesh, the thing which is trying to consume them and kill them and take them away from his love. And Jesus preaches the gospel to them, the worst of the worst. And not just them, but they are work as a symbol for all humanity, going its own way against God, trying to live its own selfish way and, and in its own darkness and confusion and alienation of the mind. So Jesus preaches the gospel to those people, the worst of the worst. And why? Well, chapter 4 continues, and it gives us some more detail there. It says, 1 Peter chapter 4, and verses 5 and 6, it says, But they, those living in darkness and disobedience now, will have to give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. Ooh, the rain has started to come. 
For this is why the gospel was preached even to the dead, that though judged in the flesh the way all people are, they might live in the spirit the way that God does. So everyone gets a chance to hear the gospel. All the dead get a chance to hear the gospel. They meet the crucified one, Christ, the one who died for them, who descended for them, who came for them, their true savior. They see him. They get a chance to hear the gospel from his own lips. They get to hear of his love, his great love for them, how he gave his own flesh for their flesh. He gave his own spirit for their spirit so they could be one spirit. They could live in the spirit eternally with him, with his father and with his spirit. Paul gets so excited about this message. In, this is the new creation message in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. In verses 13 through 15, it says, For if we are beside ourselves, you know, if we're going crazy, if we're ecstatic, it's for God. If we're in our right mind, it's for your sake. For the love of Christ controls us. The thunder's coming in here. <laughs> the love of Christ controls us because we have concluded this, that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, that those who live might die no longer live for themselves, but live for the sake of the one who died for them and was raised for them. So that people can leave the flesh behind and say, the flesh is dead, it is no more, it is not a reality. Thank you, Jesus, you died for me, you made me a new creation. Ephesians 2, Paul goes on to talk more about this, because God's richness of his mercy, the great love with which he loved us, that even when we were dead in our sins and our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. And it's by grace we have been saved. He raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ. So it's about his grace, it's about his mercy. Now imagine this when humanity, when each person gets to hear that gospel, that this is the reality, that you are loved more than your wildest dreams. You've been brought from death to life. You've been brought from torment to joy, to bliss, to the true concert that you've been looking for, for the greatest high, the most high that you've been looking for, for the greatest relationship that you've been looking for for the peace and love that you've been looking for, dude. It's all there found in Christ Jesus that the grateful dead can be truly be grateful because they are not dead anymore. There is no more death. There is only life in Christ Jesus. You know, in one Grateful Dead song, uh, the lyric goes like this. The song's called Scarlet Begonias. Once in a while, you get shown the light in the strangest places if you look at it right, there is light, and he shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. I love you, in Jesus' name. Peace and love.